Tell these racist ass cops we don't need them, need them. Back up, back up, we want our freedom, freedom. Tell these racist ass cops we don't need them, need them. When he stood up, what? Alright, so we're gonna bring up uh, Mark Tinkleman from Refuse Fascism. Yes. Hi. How y'all doing? Yeah. So, I'm Mark, I'm an organizer with Refuse Fascism. Our one unifying demand is that the fascist Trump Pence regime must go. Yes. Yes. Trump must go, man. Yes. I'm going to come back around to this, but I just want to mention the date, November 4th. Because this date needs to get deep in everyone's hands. Yeah, Today, the, the thing must and can start to change. Frank Rizzo. When we talk about segregation in Philadelphia, when we talk about white flight and destruction of significant parts and aspects of this city, abandoned and even encouraged to rot and fester by the powers that be, when we talk about generational poverty and the wealth stolen from black Philadelphia, leaving us with the rotten real estate schemes of today that kick people out of their homes, destroy neighborhoods, along with the public health epidemics, fields of shattered dreams, and so much more. When we talk about the everyday subtle racism and entitlement of white Philadelphians and the out in the open murderous racism of Ryan Powell now, the cop who fatally shot David Jones. When we talk about this, this is what Rizzo stands for. This is what this statue celebrates. Why it's here and why it must be removed. Let's be clear, it'll be a truly liberating thing to topple this statue along with every confederate monument across the nation. Yes! And we join yes. that demand. But when I, along with half guard refuse fascism and Philly crew, were down in Charlottesville last weekend, those Nazis, they were not talking about a statue. They were talking about genocide, here and now. So that is what I'm going to use my brief rest of my time to talk about real quick. Dale Lamont Jenkins, a true hero in our region, has been at the forefront of tracking and exposing these fascist foot soldiers and their group leaders for decades. He was interviewed by Philly.com, and I hope they didn't take this out of context, as they're known to do. But he was asked, what's different now? And he said that there is one thing that's different now. Donald Trump. This is clear by the statements of the fascists themselves, Richard Spencer, David Duke, and all the others. But more than that, let's look at what Trump's been able to do in this regard. One of the key things that his regime has been able to accomplish that no one up until now has. Suspense. It's to unite the thin blue line, law and order strains of American fascism with the Christian fascists, the neo-Nazis, the alt-light, the Klan, all alongside the core of the ruling class. Those who believe that American power is worth a nuclear holocaust and have the power to bring that into being. He's done this through his public statements, through his campaign, through the actual policies he's been able to implement in only the first eight months of his regime. By the time he stood up there in Long Island telling all those cops in a speech that would have made Frank Rizzo's heart swell to beat the shit out of anyone they come across, especially the quote-unquote thugs, and we all know what he means by that. By that time, murders by police across this country, which were already recent genocidal numbers, had doubled under his regime. This has been building steam along this trajectory for decades. There's a dual character to this fascism. On the one hand, it's a continuation of many aspects of what this country is built on and what every faction of the ruling class has been doing from day one up until January 19th, 2017. Yes. Yes. And it is also a rupture with that. Fascism is not just a gross combination of horrific reactionary policies. It's also not just imperialism. It's a qualitative change in how society is governed. What's crucial to understand is that once in power, fascism essentially eliminates wholesale traditional democratic rights which have been won through centuries of struggle. Now Carl Dix, who's also down there with us in Charlottesville, he said that what happened there is the outlines of a new civil war. People should really take some time and think on that for a moment. It took more than a civil war to bring down Hitler. It took a world war. But there was a moment when he first came to power where that was not inevitable. Where the German people in their millions could have been mobilized to bring the Nazi regime down through massive non-stop protests. The likes of which we've seen in other countries. Where ruling regimes, even those supported by the firepower of the United States, have been toppled through essentially non-military means. Everyone these days 
thinks they're an expert on fascism. But many don't see that difference between 1933 and 1938. For the first year of Hitler's reign, they had more robust checks and balances than we do here and now. It was clear if you were paying attention where things were going, but there was still room for dissent of many kinds. For many people, it felt normal. Now back then, there were communists and social democrats and anarchists and liberals and Jewish groups and different mainstream progressive Christian groups. People who were committed to revolutionizing the very concepts of gender and sexuality, as well as people and groups of other nationalities and religions living in Germany who all opposed Hitler to one extent or another and had different kinds of grand visions for the future. Some of them knew the wretched underpinnings of what Germany was up until that point, both the legacy of colonialism and the abject poverty. But none of these grand visions could even start to be realized, and none of the deep, gut-wrenching problems in their society could even begin to be rectified without the ousting of the Nazi regime. And so today, we find ourselves living with that closing window of opportunity. I see people here of grand visions of liberation. These are necessary. If you don't have one, get one. And we need to engage with each other about them and organize for them. But if we fail in this moment, to oust this regime, which is hell-bent on remaking the whole world. The same way the good German people failed, we'll be facing generational setbacks to any hope yes. of realizing any yes. kind of liberation, yes. alongside certain death for m even many more millions than what we've ever witnessed before. Anybody want water? On November 4th, yeah. the simple demand that the Trump-Pence regime must go will be raised by thousands in the streets across the country, and on November 5th, we're going to stay there. And we will keep demanding this literally day after day and night after night, growing in our size and urgency until our demand is met. This nightmare must end. The Trump-Pence regime must go. Yes! We refuse to accept the fascist America. To that end, we have some exciting plans. Please sign up with... Different mentalities that it seems hard. hard. It seems it seems challenging. I don't say hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. Um, um. So so I'm ready. I'm ready for this challenge. And I was built. I was built for this. I think that I think we all have we all have a purpose in life. And mine and mine is going to take on a task that most that most of back away from, from. Impossible, that impossible, impossible that people say is impossible, say impossible. I see possibilities I don't see anything, I don't see anything as being impossible Mentality, mentality, there are different, there are different mentalities, mentalities, but just like, just like there's, there's different ways to teach people how to lose it, there's different ways to 